So we're going to take a look at some mobilizations that we can do to the shoulder complex, the various joints of the shoulder complex, the glenohumeral joint, the sternoclavicular joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and the scapulothoracic articulation. These are going to be super beneficial for conditions like frozen shoulder or someone that has a reduction in range of motion with abduction, especially if any of these joints are problematic. So we're going to start this off with the sternoclavicular joint. We know that this is coming from component motion, meaning this is going to be involuntary movement of the SC joint that is going to be associated with the physiological movement or the voluntary movement of glenohumeral joint abduction. So during an abduction movement of the glenohumeral joint, you're going to have a clavicular elevation, meaning the lateral end of the clavicle is going to elevate or rise. When that happens, you're going to have movement of the SC joint, and that movement is going to be an inferior slide of the SC joint. So one of the ways that we can help to improve that component motion is to do an inferior glide of the sternoclavicular joint. In this case here, I'm going to landmark the medial end of the clavicle. And from here, I can apply an inferior movement to the clavicle as it articulates with the manubrium. We can also add in range of motion along with that. So I can mobilize this with movement. In this case here, I'm just gliding the medial end of the clavicle inferiorly as I'm bringing the GH into abduction, especially when I get to the points of which the GH abduction range of motion might be limited. And that's probably the area that I might get the most out of my mobilization. And the major joint that we want to mobilize with any GH issues with abduction is going to be the glenohumeral joint. And in this case here, during an abduction movement, as we're approaching 90 degrees, we're going to have an inferior type of slide happening at the of the humerus at the glenoid fossa. So in this scenario, I'm going to have the arm and I'm going to bring this out roughly to around the area of limitation. I'm going to create a distraction and then I'm going to have my other contact hand, my mobilizing hand at the superior end of the humerus. And then from here, I can place an inferior type of glide of the humerus against the glenoid fossa. We can also couple that with movements of this abduction movement. Now, when you're doing this abduction movement, one of the key things we want to do is allow the humerus to do whatever it's going to do. And when I say allowing it to do whatever it's going to do, meaning as you abduct the glenohumeral joint, your humerus will naturally want to externally rotate. Now, I'm not going to hinder the humerus from doing that. So as I abduct it passively, I'm allowing that external rotation to happen as I mobilize the humerus in an inferior Another direction. joint we're going to mobilize is the AC joint right over here. Now, during a GH abduction, we are going to have an upward rotation of the scapula, which creates a superior slide of the acromion against the lateral end of the clavicle. Now, you really can't go in there and mobilize that acromion superiorly to help out with that movement. But what you can do is you can go to the lateral end of the clavicle and do an inferior mobilization to it to create that superior glide. So in this case, I'm going to have my mobilizing hand on the lateral end of the clavicle. I'm going to place my other hand, and I'm going to call that my palpation hands, right across the joint line. And that way I can palpate how deep my mobilization is, along with the way it feels in my mobilization hand. And then from here, we can move that or mobilize the clavicle in an inferior direction. Now, we can also couple that with movement. In other words, we can we can create that rotation of the scapula by passively abducting the glenohumeral joint while I mobilize that lateral end of the clavicle inferiorly to create the superior glide of the AC joint. The next joint we're going to mobilize is our scapulothoracic articulation. Like we said before, during a GH abduction, the scapula will rotate in an upward direction, and that's one of the mobilizations that we want to do. We want to encourage this upward rotation of the scapula. But before I do that, I want to free up some space between the scapula and the thoracic cage. To do so, I'm going to have my stabilizing hand underneath the anterior shoulder. My forearm is going to be placed underneath our patient's arm. My mobilizing hand is going to be in various areas of the scapula, the medial border, the inferior angle, the lateral border. So in this case right here, what I want to do is take the scapula and be able to kind of retract it and bring it so I can slide some digits underneath the scapula in this manner. And then from here, I can use both hands to lift the scapula 
off of the thoracic cage. So this is going to be a posterior movement. I'm raising the scapula up towards the ceiling. And the more I do this, you can see it kind of frees up the scapula and allows for better movement. That way, when I'm ready to create an upward rotation, this is going to be a lot more smooth. Or if I'm looking to create a downward rotation, again, increasing the amount of movement present. Or we can take this whole thing and then move it in various directions. So again, starting with our distraction movement and then moving it into whichever range you're looking to do.